we've been busy with a lot of projects this summer. It's been hard to keep up with all the chickens needs. For the most part, I think we're doing a good job. This morning, I would like to focus on tidying up in the chicken yard and bringing in a whole bunch more carbon. Sasha and I went downtown and got a truckload of wood chips along with a bonus load of cabbage leaves. And we're gonna put those into the chicken yard today and just get caught up on things. So I thought I'd bring you along. Before we get into that, it'd be fun to show the joys of growing elder in a chicken yard. They love these little nibblins. <laughs> They're not showing off just yet. Normally they go crazy for them. I think they like the elder fruits when they are a little bit past prime, a little bit soft and overripe. And the sweet, this is one of those great examples, I think, of nutrient cycling, that the elderberry loves excess nutrient and moisture. So it takes the chicken manure and the excess compost and converts it into this big, beautiful body creates a ton of shade that the hens really like on the hottest of summer days. And the hens enjoy their fruit and get some medicine from it. Little birds come through all the time and get fruits as well. I think at the moment the hens are going a little bit less on it because they've got a pile of compost we dumped in there yesterday. And that's more interesting to them at this moment. These compost rings that we set up a little ways back, still growing things in a nice way. Seems like the tomato seedlings that volunteered in there are truly taking over, so those should be providing them some nice fruit soon enough. It's kind of hoping for more greens for them, but I also haven't intervened much, so you get what you get, and at least it's something. The amaranth should be dropping some seed and some leaves for them relatively soon as well. And then this should be quite nice in another few weeks. This is Helianthus giganteus, a perennial sunflower that looks a bit like Jerusalem artichoke, but actually makes seeds that are viable. They're small and goldfinches and sparrows seem to really like the seeds, but we're hoping the chickens get to have some too. But the issue or challenge that we're dealing with right now is we've had a very steady supply of food scraps coming in and clearly not enough carbon to keep up. I need to go get another truckload of sawdust pretty soon and keep bringing in wood chips. We've been leaning into hay since we got a bunch of a full truckload of bales of hay. Hay is lovely and wonderful in some ways, but it's also stringy. It's a little hard for the hens to kick through and it has enough nitrogen in it that it's not hungry enough for excess nutrient for our needs. We really need wood chip and sawdust in this system with the amount of food scraps coming in. And it's hard to convey what's happening here, but this walkway, which is a composting walkway, it feels like a waterbed. It's so, there's so much nutrient and since we walk on it, it's a little bit compacted and anaerobic. It's fine right now, but when we go to turn this, it's luscious and completely amazingly filled with nutrient, but it'll be a little bit stinky. So adding in that bulk of sawdust and wood chips will be super helpful. Here's an area where we actually have the ratios right. And this has been bulked out with sawdust. And as I turn this down the line, it should be a texture that the hens can work with really easily and have a smell that's really nice. This area back in here has had lots of food scraps added for a while. Sasha turned this the other day, but in this area we've been using hay and yeah, it's working fine. There's no smell right now. When, uh, when I go to turn it, it'll be quite hot, I'm sure. Mm, but the thing is with the hay, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make for a loose enough material to facilitate the hens working through it as well as I'd love. The greens we picked up last night are dry enough there's not a ton of moisture in them so we can put those in the chicken yard in some various areas they don't have to be in the explicit composting pipeline it's the real wet stuff that absolutely needs the carbon sponge underneath it so i'm going to put a little bit of this in there for their pleasure while i work on the other parts spread out kind of randomly like this. These sorts of greens give all the hens lots of access easily without any competition. They'll eat most of this directly, and then we can always go in with a hay fork and stir it around, fold it in, let the earthworms get access to it later. 
Same thing with weeds. If we pull a bunch of weeds from the garden or there's other agricultural leftovers from nice organic spaces, we can just diffusely put them all throughout the yard and let the chickens enjoy at their leisure. A lot of fun snacks for them for the next few moments. Now the work is to bring in the carbon wood chips source and what we'll do first is start dumping them in this common walkway. You can see this is pretty darn moist and dark and fertile and that's wonderful but it will not contribute, this whole space in here won't contribute good carbon to our next installation of compost. So we're going to fill this up with a fairly deep layer of wood chips that will absorb excess water and be one hay fork scoop away from adding carbon. Whenever we turn compost and smell anything, we can be adding carbon with a very short distance. So bulk cover material in the walkways feels like a pretty nice design direction. chickens will spread that out nice and smooth. We can add some soaked seed to it to sprout. And now we're set up. The next time we bring in some food scraps, hopefully we'll have harvested the finished enough compost out of this bay, sent it out to the gardens so that we can then move some of that wood chip in and put food scraps on top. This bay we can absolutely not add anything more to till the fall or ideally the winter. If we just leave this as it is, maybe cap it with some uh, leaves in the fall, it would be an amazing red wiggler source for them in the winter. So that is less work for us now as far as moving it all and potentially a lot of future yield so long as we can have the space to do this, uh, the other work we need to do. Anyway, on to another area. This part's going to be a little less fun, a little bit more overwhelming, but my plan is to move all of this and mix it 50% with wood chips over to here. It's only about 15 feet away, but it's, it's down slope, so that's good. So in other words, we're going to move it out from the initial receiving bay, get the carbon levels where they need to be, get a bunch of air added in, and then have it set up where from there it can start tumbling down the line. And you can see as it moves through this channel, the compost finishes. By the time it gets to that far end, it should be in a beautiful state to leave the scene. Fair bit of lifting to move it over, but it seems worth doing. That'll be the pattern. A layer or two of steaming hot, kind of stinky compost and a layer or two of wood chips. The chickens, once it's in a nice pile, will be able to kick that apart and unify and mix that. And what was steamy, stinky, a little bit off, so to speak, of the food scraps compost with the wood chips should be able to rectify and balance and look like this in about a week or so. It's pretty amazing how fast things can get back on track so long as you actually address them. It'd be nice to not have them get off track in the first place, but you know, you do what you can. And I'm seeing as I dig through here, it is very, very hot, probably 130, 140 degrees, and I can smell the ammonia, uh, the over nutrified state of this. And so what I'm doing is as I fill the wheelbarrow, I'm not just filling it with this material. This is a little bit more aged, has more red wiggler in there, so I'm adding in this as a spike, basically to get some more soil life and health into the compost before it even mixes with the wood chips. So, so long as we keep working towards the right ratios, piling it up, getting air inside and lots of carbon, we can really take something that's gone uh, pretty far to the other end of where we'd want it and get it back. The other thing we could do is simply just leave this alone, put a bunch of hay on top and let it sit for a half year. 
and it would be incredible compost, but we've got limited space, so things have to keep moving. The joys of limited space. We have moved some of this material, but not all of it. And boy, that hen is loud. We are now having a mountain of compost right here. A little hard to move that along until we go in and dig all of this compost and move it down. And we're just simply running out of time. So calling it good enough to move a fair bit of this along, get the carbon ratios where they need to be. And then that back area of compost can have this more aged compost that's more mellowed and healthy integrated with the more turbulent nitrogen rich material capped with a deep layer of hay and wood chips and then should be in a good place to receive more nutrient later on. Pretty amazing how much red wiggler life is just below the surface here and in particular everywhere that we've got these milk crates to protect the soil life from the hens Pardon me. There's just crazy amounts of worms just below. That part of this design process has been very reassuring and one that I definitely encourage folks to consider is having areas where you're dividing different ages of compost, but with uh, structures, either milk crates or wooden blocks or cinder blocks or logs or bark or sticks that allow soil life to evolve underneath. Very useful. so much better already and that's just with a few layers of loosely flaked hay and some actual really healthy more balanced soil life filled with pill bugs and red wigglers we'll get this capped in wood chips and this should be an area ready to receive more compost later on in the summer months when the heat is accumulating it's always about uh, in areas that are overheating or anaerobic spreading them out and in the winter we consolidate a lot more this area is only piled up because we're in such tight quarters here and i know that within a day or two the hens will spread all of this out nice and smooth and then we can start tumbling it down the line so a pile in midsummer here <clears throat> mainly just because we're very limited in actual square footage there's always a million more things to do but at least for an hour of work in the morning before a really hot day some improvements are made a whole bunch of nice Fresh enough greens littered all throughout the chicken yard to give our hens some pleasure uh, in some spots in good areas that'll be shady in the heat of the day so they can still eat whatever they'd like when they want to. A caching of wood chip carbon source right next to where we know we're gonna need it soon enough. And as we go to turn some of this nutrient laden compost, we can bulk it out with carbon or cover it in hay and let it rest and become red wigglers later on. The moving along of some of the really high nutrient compost and getting it cut in a generous way with wood chips knowing that we've got this whole pile to move but we can do that a little bit later and chip away at it slowly at least the stage is set that the hens can do some of the work in moving this and a back area that has been converted from a pretty aromatically robust region of our composting system to pretty clean and nice wood chips piled up in an arc so that the hens can spread it out themselves and look for fun stuff while they do. Hay on the edges to act as a catch, a little boundary area uh, for excess nutrient. And so once this is spread out in the next few days, we'll be able to bring fresh food scraps to this area and have a good carbon sponge underneath that and lots of layers with red wigglers below that can come up and migrate into the food. So lots of little improvements fair bit of labor but not too bad all in the spirit of giving good lives to these hens and also generating compost for our needs later on whole lot of chatting time for chicken tv